Almighty Creator of the universe, into your hands we deliver this comrade. He served his country during times of trial and tribulation. He served with honor and pride. It is therefore fitting that we, the living, should so honor him. Until that day, the earth and the sea give up their dead. Rest in peace, comrade. Rest in peace.
Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming out to help celebrate the life of David Eder Small Gobble of the Third. I uh, wanted to start off just by saying a couple things. Uh, we all know that he was a builder and an engineer and uh, started off at a young age of building forts, not your normal forts, forts in the foundations of the family's house that had trap doors and phone lines tapped into the lines out of the street and all the neighborhood kids could come and enjoy these forts. As he got older, that moved on to building cars, Frankenstein cars, uh, Studilac, Studebakers and Cadillac engines and Corvairs that he chopped up into pieces. Um, you know, my Uncle John ended up driving some of those until he wasn't allowed to drive anymore, and then my mom started driving them. Uh, part, probably part of the reason I became the motorhead that, that I am. Um, from there, he went on to Vietnam where he worked on boiler systems. And to make his job easier, he decided to design a central control station um, instead of having to walk around and monitor all these boilers. I'm sure it was much appreciated by the airmen that followed him um, to, that, to that duty station. From there, he came home and he started building houses, really cool houses, probably a little ahead of his time, very energy efficient. Um, you know, some of these places were, were again, really neat, use solar energy, passive solar energy, including the house that we're all familiar with, of the, uh, the house that Dave built, as Aunt Mark affectionately calls it. Um, he built a company. He built a company that, as with any business, has ups and downs, but he managed to continue to innovate it and make it better and keep it around year after year. Um, the most important thing that he built, though, probably his greatest build was his family. And that's what we're here to celebrate today. Um, he worked really hard to uh, build a legacy. He, he definitely meticulously engineered that legacy. And that's what we're here to celebrate. So I'm going to welcome up Aunt Mark to say a couple words. covered a lot of bases. Dave was a builder and an engineer, and we are here where David Utter Small was buried, and he was a builder and an engineer. In fact, this is a patent that he was granted in the 1880s uh, for something for a railroad break or something that he did, and I'll, sh I'll share this with you later on when you have the place. And Dave always felt an affinity for this man because thought, in a way, those genes have been carried on. And I think Rick Nickerson has them, I think Devin has them, I'm pretty sure TJ has them. He's been, been talking about being an engineer and trying to figure out how things work since he was born. So I, I think those genes are there, and and I hope some girls have those engineers. Be be Betty, uh, Betsy, Betty, I don't know if you have any or not. Lorelei, maybe, I hope, because it's not just a guy thing. Um, marrying Day was always an adventure. He, he was 
being transferred to Virginia. We didn't have any money, so we actually saved ten thousand dollars in two years in the 1970s. Which we didn't do anything. Bought land in Virginia, and then he said, "Okay, we're going to drive down there every weekend and start building this house." So he bought a three hundred dollar Econoline van, took out the passenger seat because that's where the lumber and stuff would go. I would sit on the lumber as we drove three and a half hours south every Friday after working all week to build, first the, the garage, because first you need a garage so you can have a place to build. And uh, we'd go down, the dog and I sitting on the lumber, Pete, and for the first couple of weeks, we're, I'm sleeping outside on the, on the ground in a sleeping bag until I realized the neighbors aren't sleeping outside of the ground, but they were sleeping in a motel that the company was paying for. But that's an engineer, they don't ask those questions. And I never asked a question about, Dave, are we going to be able to do this? We're going to do it. We did it. And ultimately, that was our first house. And then this house that, we, that you're all going to be visiting, we, he wanted land on a hill facing south to build this passive solar, something he dreamed of since he lived on Dixie Drive. He would look up on the hill, and, and he thought, said to himself, I want to own land up there. So we found land. And we started, we start, yeah, he said, here's the dimension, here's the dimension, it's rectangular, what do you want? I said, I want a pit and a high area and bedrooms. He, he built it. He, he, he never thought he couldn't do something. And he lived his life like that. And it was always an adventure with Dave. He never said, we're going to do it, and we did it. Um, sometimes things worked, sometimes things didn't. But um, he loved the house, he loved his family. He would do anything for his family. What did disturb him when he got ill was it was a complete surprise. He couldn't understand why he couldn't be fixed because he was the fixer. And he always fixed everything I broke. One of the things that attracted to me when I first met him was I'd break something, he'd fix it. I think, this is good. This is very good. And over the years, I'd break something, he'd say, just write a note, I'd write a note, and he'd fix it. Write a note, it will get done. And he did it. He never, he always followed through. If you don't write the note, it won't get done. So I can write sticky notes, put it on his wallet, and it will get done. I'm going to miss doing that, but he left us, he left us with um, his legacy. It's too short, but he lived his life well. I, I like the saying, living well is the best revenge. Some, some guy in hundreds of years ago said that. And I think we've lived well. It's the best revenge for whatever else comes. But I kind of like to think he's up there somewhere, this energy force, watching and waiting to see what's going to happen, maybe learning things that we will learn at some point. So thank you for being here. And I love you all. When uh, my dad's mother died, he selected some words to um, recite at her funeral, Gigi. And since then, he carried them, these words, in his wallet while he still carried a wallet. Uh, and he pulled them out from time to time just to remind himself of. laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a little better place than we found it, whether by healthy children, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition, to know even one life breathed easier because you lived. This is to have lived a fruitful and complete life. And he read these words to himself on occasion. This is the life he wanted to live for himself, and I think he really did. Um, I know all of us breathed easier because of him. 
and he did so for me most recently for my wedding a month and a half ago. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> he got the house in tip top shape. He was there for me and my wife. Where is she? Where is she? I get her. And uh, it was a beautiful wedding, thanks in part to him. And we all had a fantastic time, unaware of what was going on inside. That's who he was. He, he's, he, he didn't care about himself as much as he cared about his loved ones. And we can all hope to have a father that does that for us. Ago, I, my dad was kind of feeling down in the dumps, so I wrote him a card, Letterman style, for the top 10 reasons why my dad is great. So I'm just going to reread some of those things that I wrote back then. Number one, having a safe and amazing home and never having to go without. Number two, telling stories in our rooms, looking at the stars through the windows. Getting rid of rats that chew holes in the wall next to my bed. Uh, running around Kelly's playing pinball after a surf and turf or some crabs. Weekends at the boat, which you all know my dad was loved the water. So weekends at the boat, anchoring out and playing uh, Pictionary as a family. Seeing your pride when I told that off on the basketball court. That was supposed to be a beat, like beep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, going on crazy vacations to England, Florida, Cooperstown. Um, Number eight, your expression when I walk downstairs in my hookery, but very cute prom dress. <laughs> and then finally being able to kiss my dad goodnight every night before bed. So this is as a child, all the things that I was great before, but as an adult, we became friends and we hung out and we drank and ate and talked and laughed. So that I think is what I'm gonna miss the most, just kind of hanging out and becoming a friend with my father. So hopefully we'll all get to party hard and take him out in style a little later, but just wanted to share those words. So thank you. Um, I can't add a whole lot to any of that. Um, you know, he's a great brother. Um, he was taken from us too soon. You know, Dave always wanted to you know, live a long, long life so that he could see um, and witness and experience all the new technologies that will develop in the next few years. Uh, unfortunately, that got interrupted. Um, but I, I said to him, just think, you'll, you'll see, you will see all of that technology before we do. And in fact, you may even create some. Uh, so, I'm going to miss him a lot. We were losing Dave. 
the time came to tell him how much he meant to each of us. We never seem to do that properly as we live our lives. Fortunately for us, Dave was gracious in his dying. And he gave us a small bit of time to say all that we should have said as we lived. I put my words on paper as a letter to my big brother. I wanted to make sure I remembered everything Dave should hear about the many impacts he had on my life. I also knew I would be a puddle of tears trying to verbalize everything to him. Above all else, we all wanted to be as brave as he was through his final journey. That being said, it is ironic that Dave was well known to easily shed tears at family gatherings and holiday toasts. We sat together as he read my letter. We expressed our love to each other. It's a moment I will cherish forever. To begin my letter, I found a quote about siblings. It reads, to the outside world, we all grow old, but to brothers and sisters, we don't. We know each other as we always were. We know each other's hearts. We share private family jokes. We remember family feuds and secrets, family griefs and joys. We live outside the touch of time. I shared that quote with John and Steve as we try to put Dave's death into perspective. Dave was the first and the third at the same time. He was the early leader of our pack. This is the line that gets me every time and you won't believe it. He was the cocoa and peanut butter toast shell. <laughs> He was the fixer of all things. I forgive him for sawing my blue Schwinn bicycle apart for his go-kart. <laughs> I'm not sure Dad ever did for taking his lawnmower motor for installation on the same vehicle. <laughs> it is true, as the quote says, that my brothers and I will always live outside the touch of time. Very handsome. Speak up. <laughs> God. Um, I'm so grateful I had the opportunity to spend some time with Dave before he passed. The list said he was very gracious, and as always, he was a loving, caring person, strong, intelligent, and had a mischievous side to him. He mentioned the house in Virginia. I have a little story to tell you about that. I also was down there with him and John was with us a few times down there as well. I remember one night we slept out and uh, I got in my sleeping bag with all my clothes on and Dave said, you better strip because you're going to be hot. So Lord knows he was absolutely correct and uh, by uh, the dawn I was just in my skivvies and it was so cold that night when I woke up my lip was kind of stuck to the zipper on me. <laughs> that was one thing. And the most important thing I remember about Dave, he had an audacious plan to come down to this house that he built, ready to build in uh, Virginia. The, it was pre home he ordered, and it was delivered by a truck. Unfortunately for Dave and me, it was raining that day. So, guess where the truck delivered the house? At the bottom of the hill. I got to know that van very well that day. We arrived there at dawn, and I thank Dave for the hardest day's work in my entire life to this day. We started, and literally from dawn to dusk, maybe a little bit after dusk, carried that house from the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill with a little cyst from the, the van in between. 
So that kind of summarizes Dave. Uh, but what a guy. Very proud to have him as my, my, uh, my brother for all these years. And I thanked him for loving you all those years. He laughed when he said that. <laughs> well, it goes without saying. That's, <laughs> that's what it's all about. I thank you. And thank everyone for coming today. So, I love it. We all remember that house being built in, in Virginia. You know, but I reflect back when I first met Dave, the first thing I noticed about him, and we're talking about 40 some years ago, I guess, when Mark and Dave connected. The first thing I noticed about him is his positive attitude. You know, Dave was definitely a guy, his glass was always half full. He and I shared some common interests, typically cars, got involved with the core of air issue, and uh, other mechanical things, but he was definitely a can-do kind of guy. In fact, he should have been called Mr. Capability. You know, but the one thing that I remember about Dave is he was fearless. We, when we were at the house, building the house, uh, I, don't, I don't recall who was, who was there at that, that time, but we were putting the gable panel in place. Now we're talking about two stories up and then down to the foundation, yet another half a story. And we're carrying this large panel that's a bit, maybe about the size of this tent. Okay, I mean, it's a triangular panel. And two of us, one on the ladder, one on the wall, holding one end of the panel in place. And Dave, attempting to walk along this two by four wall, carrying this panel, and the wind kicks up. You know, it never even phased him. He just kept on walking, got it in place, nailed down. And I remember this about him. He was always calm and decisive. I think that kind of sums up the personality that I know of Dave. You know, we're definitely going to miss him. My condolences to you all. Thank you. This time, if there's anybody else that would like to speak, please do. his weird sense of humor. You know, we all know that Dave had a really quirky sense of humor. And, uh, you know, if any of you have any of those memories, I would love to hear them. You know, he was probably one of the most gentle people that I knew, as well as one of the most passionate. But he was the biggest supporter 
of Lydia and I, he gave me the greatest gift. So that's what I'm going to remember him the most for. And with one of my favorite verses from the Bible, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside still waters, he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. My rod and my staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overthrow, overfloweth. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm good and missing. Morgan family would like to invite everybody back to the house that they've built for uh, refreshment and to continue celebrating the life. Um, before we leave, we'd like to have a moment of silence to reflect upon the theme. Thank you everybody for coming.